I'm very excited about this video because I get to share some very cool stuff that lives within here. See those little white squares? These are the six icebreakers that don't suck. And I'm going to give, the, I can't give you this map, but I'm gonna give you all six. Stick around to the end though, because six awesome exercises, poorly facilitated, will suck. And so I'm gonna give you at the end, a handful of tips to ensure that every single one of these exercises goes off without a hitch, no matter how grumpy, extroverted, introverted, happy, unhappy your group is. <laughs> Exercise number one. Part of the reason I'm so excited about this video is uh, this little uh, map thing is this new tool that I created that's accessible in this connection toolkit. And the first exercise in it um, is extremely introvert friendly and it is called Me to We. It's very delicately placed there. And the idea is um, someone who tends to be introverted loves good conversation typically. What they may not love is not having any time to think. And so the idea of me to we is you give uh, a prompt, a question, and give the group five minutes to journal their response out. Have them silently articulate it, maybe play some instrumental music, have them actually think deeply about their response, and then get into small groups or even a large group in this case because people have thought about it and then have them share their response. It's extremely honoring to everybody in the room, not just introverts. In particular, the exercises that I'm gonna share are gonna use uh, these card decks that I created that are available for free. They're printable, well, the, the actual physical deck is not, but there's a printable version um, on the site that you can get in the link below as you're watching. If you wanna click over to that, feel free to. Um, the actual deck is called uh, We Connect Cards and a bunch of really cool questions that are color-coded Specifically, the purple questions are designed to give the introverts in the room a hug and encourage some level of self-reflection. And so uh, you might ask the question, what is something you know really well? What is something you know really well? And give people a chance to write about that a little bit. Unpack their response to that and then share it. Second one uh, is called Conversation Roulette. And this is fun, like the exact opposite pace of me to we. Um, this one, take all the green cards in the deck, lay them on a table, and lay multiple mini stacks if you've got a larger group, and uh, uh, gamify this by saying, uh, get a small group to gather around a green stack of cards green cards specifically because they're uh, questions that are designed to be relatively fun and light. Get around a green stack of cards and the group's goal is to burn through the stack as quick as possible, whipping around, giving their responses. And so this is the exact opposite, quick thinking, but depending on your group, especially if you know each other really well, can be really, really fun to get a lot of information out very quickly. And so what has been the highlight of your week so far? Um, my three and a half year old said something that actually made me cry. It was so hilarious uh, just yesterday. I, I can't just tease you without telling you. Um, he's having trouble with S's right now. And so we got some Thai food and he said, um, we said, oh Otto, this is a little bit uh, spicy. And he goes, oh, I like Pisces, but not Pisces as the Dickens. <laughs> Spicy as the dickhead. I don't know where he picked this phrase up. Uh, like the 1800s maybe? Anyway, um, green stack of cards, burn through the deck as quickly as possible. Sparks laughter, but also exchanges information. And you can use your facilitator dial to dial up or down the speed and intensity of that. And so if you actually wanna have people sitting, just going around, flipping over green cards, sharing some good moments and stories and laughs, that is equally as fun as standing, having everybody actually stand having a stool and uh, uh, raising the pressure or the time pressure and really emphasizing the fact that like, no, there's two groups here. Your goal is to burn through the cards as quickly as possible. So come up with quick responses. Third exercise, I realized I didn't share uh, any context about myself if you're new to the channel. Um, I, part of my job is traveling around and speaking, facilitating really large and small uh, groups of people to help make connection really easy at conferences, summits, symposiums, etc. And one of the things I will almost always do during a keynote is facilitate the third activity, which is this massive question swap. So everybody gets an individual card and the instructions and mechanics are very simple and we'll just visualize it so you don't forget it. Everybody has a card. The instructions are to pair up, ask that person your question, listen to their response. They ask you their question 
And after you have that little exchange, you swap cards, toss your hand in the air, signaling that you're looking for somebody new. What I love about this is the amount of choice and autonomy that's built in. You can be in conversation for as little or as long as possible. So it's like, not everybody clicks. And so if you get in a conversation and it's kind of a dud, you can just wrap it up, swap cards and split off. But if you pair up and you happen to meet your work soulmate and you're like, wow, we do the same things, different sides of the country, we gotta have a sit down, you could just stay in that conversation through the entire exercise and not swap and not meet anybody else. I really, really love that uh, element. If you wanna search um, to actually see me facilitating this exercise to learn the directions and exact mechanics for yourself, go search like best conference icebreaker, best conference game, something like that on YouTube. And I've got a video of actually demonstrating me leading this exercise with a group of 3000 senior executives. And so it's not reserved. And this is why I say icebreakers that don't suck. When it's well framed, right? This exercise can actually have an immense amount of importance and uh, intellectual exchange. It doesn't need to, I, in fact, I, I think my preference for icebreakers is that they're not over the top, goofy, et cetera. Like I would rather invite people into genuine deep connections in a comfortable way rather than like get people hyped about nothing. Fourth one, people love stories. Even people who hate icebreakers love stories. And so uh, to make stories even easier, the second deck of cards also available for free um, in the link is this deck that I created called We Engage Cards. There's quotes on one side and images on the other. You've heard the phrase that a picture says a thousand words. And so this exercise is called story swap. And what you're gonna do is invite every uh, buddy in your group to grab a card so that the picture side is face out. They're not seeing the picture, they grab the card and they're holding it, palming it, just like this, right? And the invite is to pair up with somebody and make eye contact, hold up your image so that that person can see it. And the person's job who sees that card is to take as many deep breaths as they want and share a story that relates to the image on that card. And one of the cool things is for the very, very, very vast majority of pe uh, people, a picture actually does say a thousand words and it cues all these files in people's brain. It does not need to be, right? If I, show, if I show you this card, you don't need to have gone on some crazy Saharan desert hike to have a memory about this card. There's sand in the picture, so you can tell about a time you went to the beach. There's a group of four people or some amount of people in the picture. You can tell a story about a time you went on a walk with a handful of people, right? So each image has multiple threads and pathways and avenues which is awesome for an icebreaker because it introduces an immense amount of choice. When I'm trying to break the ice, I want it to be as non-threatening as possible and I want people to feel as much autonomy as possible. And so with an image, instead of saying, uh, this is what you must talk about, it's like, here's a cue. There are 15 different pathways you can choose to take based on your own life experiences. So you swap those uh, stories and then you swap cards and you pair off and do it with somebody else. That's in one mechanic, kind of riffing off the question swap model, except with images. I told you there's a free printable version. This is what it'll actually uh, look like. So the first in that uh, printout, there is a set ah, of uh, printouts that are actually the directions for the cards. Here are the actual cards themselves. Oh ah, my goodness. Uh, by the way, if you've been following for a while and you've previously downloaded the free resources, um, recently hired a designer and paid Tori a whole lot of money to help make these free uh, resources uh, a whole lot better. So if you haven't got them in a while, check them out. The reason I'm showing you this is one of the exercises on here um, is called visualizing values. Sometimes to gain a whole lot more buy-in with an icebreaker, you want the topic and the discussion to be really focused on some purpose or like business or work related outcome. And so most organizations have values that they espouse and they usually just live as posters on walls and maybe people uh, abide to them uh, or not. So this idea is pick one of those values off a poster. Most organizations have integrity or some version of it, honesty, something else. So you take one of those values and you have the uh, image cards spread out or quote cards spread out all over a table, floor, wherever else. And you invite people really simply to just choose an image that represents a time when they saw integrity or honesty show up. When they saw that value show up in their real life. It could be a story from home or work, it doesn't matter. The point is 
we want to collect a whole bunch of cases where integrity showed up. And it could have been like this ethical dilemma or choice to be really honest or not. Um, but the point is to get a bunch of really concrete stories out. And the magic of visualizing your values and pairing a story with an image like this is that imagery and experiences tend to be encoded in a, into our long-term memory. And so we remember those conversations a lot, a lot more than if we just like sat around a round, round table and said, what does honesty mean to you? One of my least favorite phrases when people are leading icebreakers is before we get started, let's do an icebreaker. Before we get started, let's have a conversation, right? Icebreaker, you started. And, and if you watch any of my other videos, you know that I'm actually on a mission to gently eradicate the word icebreaker and replace it with connection before content. That's much more intentional and purposeful and you can watch some other videos about that. I think sometimes a really good icebreaker actually moves people forward. So this exercise is called Forging a Future. And as I share this, we'll toss up a screen share. There's actually a, a digital web app version of the deck. No email sign-in required or anything else. You just go to weengagecards.com, which you can see here. And the first card that should pop up is this prompt. Choose a card that represents a future you would like to create. And it is amazing when people choose select an image represents a future they want to create. It's amazing that if you go back to people a year later, they will actually remember the card that they chose. The brain is crazy. The brain is so cool. In the physical deck of the cards, which you can see in the link below or the printable version, there's uh, more full directions on how to walk people into a deeper conversation around forging a future. For now, I really got to give you some lightning round tips to make sure that none of the six exercises I just told you suck. So if you've written a note of like, oh, I want to lead this one at this event, do not lead this one without listening to these couple ideas. First tip, create productive silence. It's amazing how much just two to three seconds of silence does to reset the brain. So as I've been talking fast, using my hands in this video, that two to three second pause, if you had clicked onto another tab was like, What's happening? Did the video pause, right? It, like it resets people's attention. It also gives people time to actually process and think. And so by creating productive silence for any of the six, before you invite people to share, I even sometimes on my hand count down of like, let me just give the whole room five seconds of quiet for everybody to think of their response before I invite you to share. And that five seconds can be a huge gift. And in that very tiny amount of time, you can actually increase the quality of conversations and connections that happen just with that one single prompt. Second tip, and I'm getting close to the camera and I don't even care what happens to the lighting because this is important enough. Please remind people that they have 100% choice and autonomy in what they share. No matter what question they pick, no matter what image they choose, no matter what exercise you lead, you're not making them say anything. They get to choose the level of response. And so if you ask me, how would you like to be remembered? I can give a very superficial answer and I'd say, I'd like to be remembered as somebody who is positive. And that's true, not particularly vulnerable or deep. I could also answer that question by saying, I would love to be remembered as somebody that when you cross my path, in a very gentle way, I was able to help eradicate small talk and create conversations that matter. And this is really important to me. I believe this is actually why I exist on the planet, da 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 on and on. You see that? Same question, two super different levels of response. Third tip, adapt to your purpose, your audience. There's no way that I can know your life and your context better than you. And so forget about everything I said. And my invitation is to ruthlessly steal any one of the six exercises I just share, ruthlessly steal it, reinterpret it, and apply it to your own context. And so if you wanna rename it, if you wanna change the directions, if you wanna change the framing, the tone, the prompts, go for it. Ruthlessly steal and adapt it to the purpose and the context that you are in because that will help your exercise absolutely not suck. And the last tip, which is by far the coolest, most impactful, best, most, bestest tip, you should totally consider buying this connection toolkit because on the other side of these six exercises, oh my goodness, there are actually nine more really clever strategies to build connection with some fantastic video tutorials that have QR codes that you can just scan, you can hang out on the couch and learn how to become a way better facilitator of activities that aren't terrible. I'm Chad, really lovely spending some internet time with you. If you happen to be on your computer, 
just to like bend the internet, a physical QR code. If you scan this, you get your free printable cards as well. Uh, I know that I was a little cheeky and trying to push the toolkit on you at the end, but it's kind of all available for free right here. Have an awesome day.